Hey guys, so why did my fingers not do what they were supposed to do? Hey guys, so um, last time I uploaded my video was a Friday and I told you guys that at 500k I was going to make a second channel because I thought that was a pretty good number to just go with. Excuse me. And um, I said we had about, what, uh, 70k left when I was filming my last video on Friday and now it's Monday and we only have 60k left. So you guys are clearly just doing God's work right now. Anyway, if you want a second channel, then subscribe and, you know, hit the bell and all that good shit. But also Twitter, Instagram, follow me on there. It's a fun time and it, you get all the updates that you could possibly need. Why am I holding this bottle? I feel like I'm getting ill again and I'm usually not the kind of person to get ill a lot. My immune system is like, no, but right now, uh, I'm not feeling the best, but that's okay because, you know, work needs to be done. People go to work when they're ill and stuff, you know? So the first story is clearly not a um, celebrity kind of. It's not YouTube tea. It's not very celebrity tea, but unless like... I I'll get into it. The royal family. Who would have thought that would be the first story? Prince Harry and Meghan Markle decided to um, call it quits and move to Canada and basically just say nope to their royal duties and just uh, become financially independent and I could not stand more. Wow. Uh, we stand Prince Harry first of all. He is a supportive husband. He is putting his wife and child above his grandma and I am here for it. We are not here for toxic families. Uh, we are here for supporting your significant other when they are being bullied uh, by the whole nation and I just stand but also I heard that allegedly Meghan Markle's and Prince Harry's wax figures have been removed from the Madame Tussauds uh, royal family display after their announcement you're telling me they're doing all of this because they decided to be financially independent but when Prince Andrew was hanging out with Epstein um, they were just dead silent crickets if you will so that's quite hypocritical we stand britain i guess here i am you know it's the country i'm living in it's doing great they're doing incredible throw brexit into the mix and this is just the country you want to be in justin bieber <laughs> didn't think i'd talk about him either so justin bieber recently released a song called yummy now here's the tea selena gomez as you know is justin bieber's ex and selena gomez announced that she was going to be releasing her album in january um and then all of a sudden when she releases her single justin bieber decides to announce his documentary and his album which is now going to be coming out right before her album and you're telling me it's somehow a coinkadonk um i don't think so but he released a song called yummy and it's about his um his wife uh you know the the woman that he chose to marry and how yummy she is because you want to hear about you know marital sex of course me too me too and the song didn't do well um in the grand scheme of things because it's a song and Justin Bieber has recently been posting on his story and on his actual Instagram saying things like how to get yummy to number one guys it's about to get way worse just wait for it Spotify why don't you use the ugly font open the playlist with yummy on repeat and stream it don't mute it but play it at a low volume and let it play while you sleep this is Justin Bieber we're talking about Justin baby Bieber um Justin, I had the most viewed video on YouTube for a while, Bieber. He's begging his fans to listen to his song on low volume because he knows it's so he's not he's not trying to torture you he's not saying listen to it on full volume turn it down turn it down you don't have to listen to it and let it play whilst you sleep itunes buy the song on itunes buy the song multiple times on justin's website remember this is justin's comeback and if we all come together we can give him his sixth number one on the hot 100 bb hot 100 billboard hot 100 why did that take me so long share this post with everyone you know let's do this this is fucking pathetic and guess what selena gomez is out here in the corner with her number one album right now she's on number one her album is number one um i'm not a huge fan of selena gomez i'm not i'm not like here nor there with selena gomez but in this battle i'm glad she won because he is just so petty for a husband you know you got a wife to take care of oh anyway emma chamberlain recently had a cosmopolitan cover she was on the cover of cosmopolitan and wow uh well done to emma chamberlain uh, why did i say it so weird and in that she had an interview where she um amongst other things said that she likes to keep her relationships private and she wishes that she didn't have to keep her relationships private but things change so quickly that she doesn't actually know who she trusts enough to make public and she sometimes feels like if she makes them public 
then if it goes wrong it's a little bit awkward so she wishes that was a part of her life that she could show just like the rest of her life but it is just not viable right now but she does have a boyfriend so and they're staying low-key he's not like you know want to be famous so they're doing great and i'm so happy for her i'm pretty sure in another interview or this interview she also said that she hates being called an influencer and she just hates the, like influencer culture and she says you know it's not her job to influence people it's her job to entertain to be funny to um make people happy and make people laugh but her job is not to influence people so um i can definitely see where she's coming from it's it almost puts more pressure on you because to influence people it would usually be good to influence them in a good way and that puts pressure on people to be role models which they never signed up for like emma chamberlain didn't sign up to be someone's role model she just signed up to entertain and that is what she's here to do so <clears throat> another thing james charles on his tiktok account um decided to post like a bachelor type thing where he basically just described himself and said he's looking for a boyfriend and um um, some people have been giving him shit for it and I think there was absolutely nothing wrong with that video um, He essentially just like described himself and said that in 2020 he's gonna put himself out there Put himself out of his comfort zone and find someone that genuinely makes him happy And this is so much better than like all the shady shit that's been happening because with this it's so public That no one can then come out and be like oh, I was used by James Charles because like you have to physically reply to this TikTok and you replying means you're interested so at that point there is no like going back from that you replied you were interested um it's it's a very like it's cringe slightly but it's a very safe way for james charles to approach this whole subject except is this going to get many like actual serious applicants no um and is there going to be a lot of go like gold diggers and clout chasers absolutely so um i think james charles just needs to watch himself before he gets used for some coachella tickets again you know gabby hannah with an ironic tweet uh this isn't like big news i just thought it was pretty funny someone sent it in my dms and i was like wow this is funny someone said <clears throat> <clears throat> <clears throat> studio is miles ahead of classic if you're going to blindly criticize it at least have some constructive criticism now if you're unaware of what's happening um there's this thing called a creator studio when you have a youtube channel there's obviously your channel there's like your sub box and all the stuff that other people have access to and you have this thing called creator studio where you can see real-time views real-time subs comments um how like your videos are ranking from one to ten so on and so forth and that's only if you have a channel and there was classic creator studio which is the old version and then there's the new creator studio which is like the new and improved version which like i was kind of upset about at the start but now i genuinely really really like it i think it's really good it looks very like modern and just more new i feel like the old creator studio just looked very outdated and it just didn't look great um so i think it's cool but a lot of youtubers obviously don't like change a lot of people don't like change and they're just complaining about it for no damn reason because they just don't want to learn how to use a new thing and get used to it and adapt to changes and, and life and it's just like you know <laughs> on a deeper scale like life changes all the time you're gonna have to adapt and just change with it right or you're gonna get left behind so adapt youtubers please it's not that difficult but gabby hannah then replied to that tweet <laughs> which is the whole point of why i'm talking about this and she said i gave constructive criticism every damn time i had to escape to classic and they ask why or when i send videos directly to them showing the errors they know the issues we've all been telling them and it's funny um it's very funny that gabby hannah somehow here seems to understand and know what constructive criticism is but when that same constructive criticism comes her damn way, all of a sudden, that's bullying. So what I think um, Team YouTube should do right now is say, I am the victim in this situation. Gabby Hanna is bullying me and I am not here for it. And I want you, Gabby Hanna, to manage your f***ing expectations. And I think at that point, I would just have to stand Team YouTube. I really would. I would never complain again. And the person that sent it to me in, um, in a DM underneath that, um, she says, what she says in the thread is rational, but this tweet singled out is quite ironic. I don't know. I feel like there's a metaphor in there somewhere. And if you don't know, that's from Gabby Hanna's poetry. Like, I feel like me and like my viewers just have this like understanding of like just chatting about people we're like so good at it and i'm just here for it i feel like it's gonna sound crazy but like we're almost on half a million subs and i feel like i found half a million people with the same mindset as me and i just never thought because i could never even find one person with the same mindset as me and now i have like almost half a million people with the same damn mindset and the same chat chattery and i'm here for it chattery chat chattery Trisha Paytas is still attacking Stephanie. Um, if you know what's happening, Stephanie Sue and Ikikado Avocado obviously had a big ordeal. She made a video about him, then he made a video about her, and then she made a video about him. Now he's making videos saying he's not sorry, and then that he is sorry, and then he's not sorry, and he is sorry. And in that whole mix, Trisha Paytas came in and said that he's dangerous, and then she made a collab with him, and then she said he's dangerous, and then that 
I, she's just, um, Trisha Paytas is, uh, as I've mentioned on multiple occasions before, not the smartest human being I've ever seen. Um, not the brightest bulb in the box. And she continues to make videos about Stephanie Sue, Like, uh, saying, oh, if she was really the victim, she would have gotten a lawyer by now. And she did. We already spoke about this. Stephanie Sue was getting a lawyer involved for basically how he, um, violated her privacy in her own home. And that's why she is not speaking out on this anymore. She's moved on. She's living her best life in 2020. Uh, and yet these hoes that are not in <laughs> I didn't mean to, you know, I mean, like, you know, you say these bitches. I don't know why that came out so aggressive. And these people are still talking about it in 2020 and stephanie sue has said her piece and moved on so can we all move on with her please so yeah she is saying basically things like oh you know she's not the victim but I just can't get myself to watch any more of Trisha Paytas' videos because they're all like 40 minutes long of just gibberish and waffle and nothing, nothing of value. There is nothing said there that I could be like, oh, that's interesting about, you know? It's like she says nothing. She says absolutely nothing. Next, Love Island came back a bit early this year. If you don't know what Love Island is, it's um, it's now like a, it was like a British thing and they're doing it in like Australia now and America and they're doing it in like a lot of different places now. It's essentially like people go to the show and they have to couple up and then people get kicked off and then the last couple that stays wins 50,000 and they get to either split it or take the whole thing and then it's like a whole drama, drama dramatic thing. It's a great show to just like shit watch, like hate watch. But um, this year it came early. I think what they're trying to do is make two editions a year, which I think you're just overdoing doing it at this point thanks um they usually do it in the summertime around like june and now they're doing it in january like the first episode was yesterday and there's a guy on there called ollie who um came on there is the most tory person i've ever seen and it's also just come out that he hunts animals for fun like trophy animals like you know he he hunt he, he kills them and then he takes a picture with them he's that guy imagine going on love island finding the love of your life leaving the show and finding out that he hunts animals for fun you know i always say this it's like when kids are caught killing animals it's usually a sign that they're going to be a murderer in the future and it usually pans out that way so i'm not sure why when you're an adult all of a sudden that ideology goes out the window and you can just hunt animals take pictures with them and it's all good and well and you're like this macho alpha male um uh, because i find it absolutely trash the next piece of tea is jacqueline hill and how she just keeps on doing stuff that we don't need to know she said that in 2020 she was going to stop like paying attention to the negativity and that she was going to just like you know be positive and stuff and then 2020 comes around and she's tweeting about how people are calling her fat again damn it jacqueline <laughs> just stop paying attention to people but also at this point are people calling you fat because I don't see it. She said that she is um, getting a lot of DMs about how she looks um, fat and swollen, but her DMs are turned off. Like, you know, you can like do the thing where your DMs are blocked off to anyone that doesn't follow you. Yeah, like I can't DM her because she doesn't follow me. So I don't know how many DMs you're realistically getting. And if you're getting them, they're from people that you follow as well. So just think about that one for a minute. Then she's talking about Instagram DMs. Then like, why are you looking at requests from people that you don't know? If you know that people are mean, just like, why do you do that to yourself and then continuously tweet about it. Tana Mojo and Jake Paul. Recently in like an interview, Jake Paul said that he um, fell out of love with Tana Mojo when he fell in love with fighting, like boxing, um, which is great, good good for you. And Tana Mojo then just kind of like had to go along with that publicly because she was made to look like a clown yet again. And this comes after, you know, that long video she made going over um, how like badly Jake Paul's been treating her and stuff and that she just wanted a break. I don't think he wants a break. I think he wants a breakup and um, Tana Mojo is just here for the break. I think Tana Mojo in 2020 needs to leave Jake Paul behind. She needs to just mind her own business. Um, and I mean that in its literal sense of she's got a business to upkeep and she needs to mind it and not get into weird clout relationships. Like she got what she needed out of this relationship realistically. Now they can just be MTV co-hosts. They don't even have to be friends. You know, there's people that work together that hate each other. So, you know, you're not going to be alone in that. And at this point, I think she just needs to be single for a while because it's getting a little bit ridiculous with the he's saying publicly to pretty much just humiliate her because i don't see how he can say all of that and not realize how embarrassing that is for her like he has to realize that by saying these things 
he's putting her in a really weird position where it looks like she's a lot more into him than he is into her and i don't think he's ever going to come around and be like oh i'm now ready for a committed relationship with you um she's always going to be the cool girl that he goes to when he is not feeling like a relationship but he wants some attention and maybe a cuddle and then he just wants um to go see his instagram models yet again so i think um if tanamojo is sticking around in the hopes that he wants a committed relationship at some point in time i think you're wasting your damn time and the uh, earth will literally freeze over before he gets himself into a committed relationship next last tea in my last video i spoke about jeffree star and how everyone has been clickbaiting um him and nate breaking up before that was even announced and i said you know when there's absolutely no proof for things there is no need for you to clickbait that um mainly when it's something as sad as that it's just kind of like mm, you know but now it's been confirmed um he uploaded a video where he goes over the breakup and he basically says why they broke up that they broke up and all the ins and outs of that but a lot of people on twitter and by a lot i mean like the tweets are getting a solid 60k likes and a lot of like actual youtubers and influencers are talking about it as well so it's not just me before any jeffree star cult fans come for me and are like you find the problem with everything no i found the problem on twitter because other people had a problem with it i'm just here to report on that so how about you go you know do whatever it is that you jeffree star cult members do build like an altar for him or something and pray to it there was also recently a a lot of speculation like for example here for the tea like the old school drama channel she um has been speculating that nate has been cheating on jeffree star and that like now nate is with some like girl in miami or malibu or one of those places and there is like no proof once again please provide me with the receipts i would really really love to see them but until i see them mind your own damn business god there are so many people that are just like oh they've been cheating on each other and it's like okay and what if they have but also can you provide me with the receipts um because right now i'm just not seeing anything but you're like conspiracy theory so yeah overall there's just been a lot of speculating but the one part that is like the most weird to me is how jeffree star has approached the whole situation he posts on instagram this picture of him like crying and i don't remember that being in the video that's my that was my first like red flag i don't remember that pose being in the video so it's not like he took a screenshot of the video he actually had to pose like that which is this is all alleged information by the way um this is just my opinions on the matter and the internet's opinions on the matter so take that with a grain of salt but it looks like he had to pose for that instagram picture to promote his video and it goes you know oh i'm so heartbroken <laughs> i'm paraphrasing right now i'm so heartbroken um me and nate just broke up watch the video it link in the bio that's a bit strange like you just broke up with your long-term partner and you're like new video on it link in the bio that was a little bit of a weird one for me but i kind of let it slide i was like you know it's probably just me overreacting because i don't like him and then i went on twitter i'm blocked by him so i had to go on my second account and he, his pinned tweet on his twitter right now is the link to that video and it's like just posted my new video about my breakup with nate um watch it guys or something like that and once again the thumbnail to the video on youtube doesn't look like a screen grab from from the video that he filmed it looks like a posed picture which is strange it is just such a youtuber thing to do and it's just very strange and then um his video got to 20 million views it was on 21 million last time i checked and that was yesterday so i'm pretty sure it's on like 30 now it was number one trending for a while and people are saying you know oh he's not using this for money or anything because the video is not monetized like he didn't put any ads on it the thing is i don't know if you know how things on the internet work Sometimes you don't have to monetize things for them to benefit you greatly, you know? And YouTubers have this um, tendency to subconsciously, they don't even, it's not like I'm saying people actively do this. Yes, there are people that actively do this, but a lot of the YouTubers do this subconsciously. They don't realize they're doing it until someone points it out. They use every bad or good situation for like monetary gain. And Jeffree Star might not realize that he's doing this, but in reality, he is using this very sad, <laughs> sad moment in his life for monetary gain. Even if the video isn't monetized, it is on trending and it is getting 20 plus million views some of those people are bound to be new viewers of jeffree star that are going to subscribe and then watch all the videos after that which is potential future monetary gain even if it isn't current present time monetary gain and those people can then become jeffree star stands and buy all of his products that is also potential future monetary gain so i feel like youtubers don't realize they do it when they do they use bad sometimes even sad quite terrible situations in their life to gain something from it and you know we all do it to some degree and some just push it all the way up here and i think this is a pretty good example of youtubers not realizing when they're doing it and doing it in pretty bad situations like the fact that you had to like fake cry for a thumbnail and didn't realize in the process that that was like a strange thing to do a little strange a little weird a little bit weird and then another thing the last thing and the probably worst thing that jeffree star has done 
regarding this whole thing that everyone has been talking about is the infamous Instagram story where he is crying like tears falling down his face for some odd reason sad romantic music playing in the background I don't know if that was just like an accident or if that was um a choice that was being made but there is sad music playing in the background and he goes you know oh me and Nate are gone mm -hmm. and then he at the end of that mid crying tear falling down his cheek goes swipe up uh, to go watch the youtube video and everyone just said that was like the most monumental like this is the youtube culture this is what youtubers are about it's just like the screenshot of him mid crying just going swipe up guys oh my god i thought like that is just such peak peak youtuber person like this is just peak youtuber like toxicity i don't know how i feel about the whole thing obviously i feel bad that him and nate broke up but i also just think the way this has been handled is the strangest thing i've ever seen uh if you enjoyed this video give it a thumbs up comment down below anything comment down below and subscribe because i post videos every other day or whenever i can because sometimes there's delays and when there's delays you should hit that bell and then you'll be notified of when i'm uploading follow on socials they'll be in the description down below and i'll see you in my next one bye guys